people say, well, what constitutes success in this work? And to me, success in this work is helping people live who want to live, helping them to fight for life when they want to fight for life, helping them to die when they want to die, and helping them when they're confused and they don't know if they want to live or die, and being supportive of them during that time of confusion, which is frequent. Mm -hmm. And so if we turn loose of, you see, if we get to where we aren't so concerned with life and with living, and so we're comfortable with living and we're comfortable with dying, then we have freedom to move. But there's so much of our culture that's caught up into that death is terrible. Death is to be avoided at all costs. And, and even thinking about death is to be avoided. So as a result, we have this huge um, constriction of, of, of our vital resources, of our body's vital energy that goes pushing thoughts of death away rather than opening our arms to it. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult. It, it's, yeah. it was very, very difficult work for me to begin to come to terms with death and my own issues around death. And so I can understand why we avoid it. Mm -hmm. And it's not good for us to. We need to, we need to become more and more comfortable with death in order to live life more effectively. You make a very important distinction that I think is relevant here between positive thinking on the one hand and healing thinking or healing beliefs on the other. Yes. I was taught this by uh, uh, a very important person in my life uh, in being clear between positive thinking and healthy thinking. And what's important to appreciate is that uh, healthy thinking is uh, healthy by definitions. And positive thinking is much healthier than negative thinking. Okay? If I say, I'm going to die tomorrow, okay, that's very negative. If I say, I am going to get well, that's very positive. Okay? Healthy is, I don't know how long I'm going to live. I don't know how long I'm going to live. And what I do makes a significant difference. This is what Maltzby taught me, mm -hmm. as he taught me to incorporate a cognitive approach into the work that I was doing. Maltzby's a researcher from Howard University, I believe. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And he was the one that showed me the difference between healthy thinking and positive thinking. See, positive thinking isn't grounded in fact, whereas healthy thinking is grounded in fact as much as we reasonably can be. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, again, it's important to appreciate that it's much healthier to think that I'm going to be alive and well two years from now than it is to believe I'm going to be dead of my illness two years from now. So it's healthier than negative thinking, yeah. but I don't believe it's as healthy and as fulfilling as healthy thinking as mm -hmm. the criteria that he uses, that he sets forth healthy and, thinking. And, and when you say grounded in fact, I. I, my sense is that maybe a better word than fact might be sort of existential reality. It's like coming to grips with you know, the meaning of life and death in, in, in some sense. Well, Maltzby had some criteria for examining your beliefs right. and determining whether or not they are healthy. Right. He has five very simple questions to ask of a belief to determine whether or not it's healthy. And a healthy belief will, satis will positively satisfy three or more of those questions, mm -hmm. and an unhealthy belief will satisfy two or less. Mm -hmm. And those questions are, number one, is it based to the best of my ability, the best of my understanding on fact? Mm -hmm. Does it protect my life and my health? Does it help me achieve my short and long-term goals? Does it help me resolve or avoid my most undesirable conflicts? And does it help me feel the way I want to feel? Yeah. And you see that the place where positive thinking gets into difficulty with that is in, in the area of the factual aspects mm -hmm. as best we can ascertain them. But I always tell my patients, my patients who prefer to think positively, I want to, I want to present myself with the belief that I will be alive two years from now. I say, that's up to you. My job is not to tell people how to think. My job is to the best of my ability to attempt to point out healthier and less healthy ways of thinking and ways of living. And then we as individuals make the best choices that we can that work for us. Yeah. Are you of the opinion that when people 
uh, become ill, the, the, if they have unhealthy belief patterns, they sort of uh, create disease out of those beliefs? I believe unhealthy thinking mm -hmm. plays a significant role in the quality of life, in the development and course of illnesses, and in the quality of death. There are many other factors besides just our beliefs, oh. but one significant factor are the beliefs that we have. Mm -hmm. and, and these comprise, to me, our personality. Oh. One of the big controversies that, that seems to come up uh, in this type of work where, where we look at our attitudes and the way we visualize and, and begin to take responsibility for our health is, is that sometimes people fall into, I, I guess it would be guilt, if, you know, they don't want to have to, except it's bad enough that they're sick, they shouldn't have to take responsibility on top of that for being sick. Yes, it's a very important issue because mm -hmm. guilt is a very important issue in our culture. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we help people learn how they're creating unhealthy emotional states. Unhealthy guilt is one of the most common unhealthy emotional states that we create. So what we do is help people cure themselves of creating unhealthy guilt. Mm -hmm. uh, that's part of the process. And it's, it's uh, just as easy as teaching a person how to stop creating unhealthy anger, mm -hmm. how to stop creating unhealthy fear, and how to stop creating uh, unhealthy hopelessness. The dynamics are the same. Guilt is actually easier, much easier than hopelessness. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, uh, it's simply a process of, uh, of learning, learning how to produce healthier emotional states and how to stop producing unhealthy emotional states. Now, of course, there's, there's much more to it than that, but this is one central issue that impacts all of us, mm -hmm. plus the uh, acknowledgement that we always do the best we can with mm -hmm. the information that we have at the time. Yeah. The issue of guilt is an important one. It's an important one to bring up because uh, guilt is used so much in our culture to motivate. Our parents, my parents used guilt to motivate me. I use guilt to motivate my children. Our schools use guilt to motivate. Our churches use a ton of guilt to motivate. Our government uses guilt to motivate. Mm -hmm. The American Cancer Society uses huge amounts of guilt to motivate. So it's important to appreciate that we learn to motivate ourselves with guilt, and this is a very unhealthy habit. Yeah. Guilt doesn't wind up being a problem in my patients. It winds up being a problem in people who learn a little bit of information and use that information in unhealthy ways. Mm -hmm.